Ketov Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live. And of course, uh, as the headline states in here, uh, Israel is preparing for a direct strike on Iran. Now, that is not anything you're going to see in the news media other than Israeli News Live. But we do have uh, intel coming out of Israel that Israel is preparing for a direct strike on the uh, on Iranian targets inside Iran itself, ports themselves, and even uh, not limiting to the possibility of using nuclear type devices in this strike. I would think more along the lines of bunker busters, which are uh, they do have a limited nuclear capability in these strikes that, uh, that would possibly be used there. Uh, those of you that have already been following the news, we've had several reports coming out over the last few days here where Israel has been striking, uh, according to one release there, Iranian assets in Iraq, but they've also struck inside of Lebanon, Iraq, Syria, Gaza, Yemen, etc. All these different locations have been struck and Israel is continually to reach out further and further to strike Iranian targets uh, all across the Middle East there. There was a report earlier today, uh, well, I say earlier today, only within the last hour where both uh, President Erdogan of Turkey and President Putin of Russia have come out and are talking about how that the situation could escalate and instead of bringing pre peace to Syria, this could cause uh, Syria to plummet even into a darker war that has already been going on for the past eight years. And, um, of course, Erdogan knows Saint himself, and uh, uh, it kind of makes me almost laugh when I look at this, because Putin is certainly 100% behind Israel. Putin has allowed uh, un unfeathered attacks by Israel throughout the uh, Syrian region there. And uh, then, of course, you have to realize the United States is also in a, a, a permitting Israel to strike uh, inside of Iraq as well. You know, I can understand when Israel first reached out to Russia to have a buffer zone between Israel uh, and uh, Iranian assets anywhere within a 50-mile kilometer of the Syrian border. That was realistic. That made more sense uh, that Israel wanted this type of a buffer zone for the protection of the Israeli people worrying and con uh, concerned that, that Iran could attack Israel. But now it seems to have gone completely overboard, as we see in article after article, uh, you know, about the attacks that are going on. Also, attacks in Lebanon and Syria, Iraq, added to the mounting tensions. This here is on uh, democracy now, mounting tensions in the Middle East. Uh, uh, this was, uh, of course, the, uh, an attack that happened in Lebanon just uh, just the other day as well, and. <clears throat> Uh, of course, now Hezbollah's uh, Secretary General Hassan Nasrallah also warning that if Israel strikes Lebanon, that uh, they will the uh, the Le the Hezbollah military will will attack from every direction. Well, he claims that Israel's military would become non-existent. I don't really believe that's going to be the case, but nonetheless, he is threatening that himself in retaliation to any attack on Lebanon. I will say though, it will it w his attack would not just come without consequences for the Israeli people, and this is one reason why I kind of feel like the uh, the state of Israel, our own people, are going a bit overboard in attacking Iranian assets throughout the entire region uh, because it is putting Israelis at risk. But then again, if there does come a regional war, if Israel is attacked. This will carry far more reaching consequences, not just for the Israeli citizens that would be killed in a retaliatory attack, whether it be by Iran, Hezbollah, uh, or any of the other nations in the region there, but it would also bring about a heavy persecution on the Christian population living inside of Israel because the Christians that are there have warned that a war on Israel after the dust settles will bring about new laws and a heavy persecution on the Christian population uh, in the region there. So <clears throat> not a good situation at all, friends. We realize that. We know things are, are heating up over there. Uh, in fact, on, uh, where is it? I think I have it right here. Yeah, this is on the, the 21st century 
Um, they say in here, most cases, the pretext is Iran, <clears throat> though Israel has not yet had the courage to mount open attacks on the region's largest independent state. However, in the past, the Mossad has assassinated some of Iran's nuclear scientists, as detailed in uh, Ronan Bergen's 2018 book, Rise and Kill First. Washington State Media Radio for, uh, for Farda reported Israeli leader Benjamin Netanyahu saying after two attacks on the uh, PMF, in Iraq that Iran has no immunity anywhere. We will act and currently are acting against them. Uh, Iran, uh, wherever it is necessary, most have taken this as an admission and it is the same rationale used for Israeli attacks on Syria and Lebanon. Again though, the information that we are getting from Israel is that Israel is preparing to do a strike on Iran directly. I can only tell you that one source from the Pentagon shared with me only a couple of months ago that we are getting in over our head and Iran, this would be, could be catastrophic for the United States, not just to our forces in the Middle East there because of the technology that the Iranians have with the Chinese, but also for the East Coast of the United States, the Pentagon official told me. So we are dealing with a very serious situation that is happening and uh, couple this along with those, the information I shared with you last night, how that there are uh, even ministers that, uh, you know, and I assume this is part of the clergy response team initiative uh, that have been given uh, passes to be able to escape what is coming here in the United States. So uh, I, I don't put anything <clears throat> Uh, don't take anything just lightly at, at, at any point now. Uh, we are certainly living in a very troubling time. I can only see that as the wars, and this will probably be where everything begins, and I was told originally it would begin in the Middle East. Once we saw an attack on Iran, there would be a possible limited nuclear strike on the United States uh, that we also, as Americans, could expect that there would be a genocide of the people in this nation that would follow after that. So this is why we see even President Trump currently trying to bring out new gun laws unlike anything else you could ever even imagine. Uh, these new gun laws that, uh, that President Trump, you know, here he is supposed to be a Republican, should be standing for the Second Amendment right, which is what he pledged to do after the NRA gave him millions of dollars in support to become president of the United States. Uh, now he stands in solidarity with the Democrats on four of the five laws they want to have enacted. Uh, I can only imagine, as we know, he was a Democrat originally, so uh, he only converted to become a Republican, and that was to woo the American voters on his side. Uh, we do know that if he is in power, when all this unrest comes, uh, uh, allegedly 14 months from now, and we go into a situation, this nation would go under martial law, and of course, they would round up your guns then. It's not going to be very good. Then guess who marches in right afterwards? No wonder why we have Chinese factories setting up in the United States, you being paying just little tiny peanuts for your work. We're going to be a communist nation unless the Americans wake up and do something about it. I'm Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live. Erev Tov.